In the previous lesson, we talked about complicated uh, condition statements where a whole set of things have to evaluate to true in order for something else to be executed in your code. Uh, overall, this is demonstrated to you how to do an if-else statement. But what if there's more than one condition? What if it's not just if this, then, or that? What if you have like a more nuanced thing? So let me go ahead, let's go ahead and demonstrate how you might do that. I'm gonna erase everything that's here currently, and let's pretend that we're trying to figure out whether we're supposed to eat based on the time of the day it is. And to make things simple, we'll use a 24 hour clock rather than a 12 hour clock. So first I'll say let i hour of day equals 12. Okay. And we'll make this relatively simple. We'll say if i hour of day is exactly equal to 8, then that's 8 in the morning. And we'll say alert breakfast time. Or maybe if you got up really early to work out, maybe it's second breakfast time. I don't know. But instead of just a regular else now, let's do an else if. And we've, if we do an else if, because we want to pick up a bunch of different time, time frames over the course of the day, then we can put in another conditional statement, or as many as we need, um, within these parentheses. So I'll say, now I'm thinking about lunchtime. So I'll say, if I hour of day is exactly equal to 12, then I want to tell the person alert, and I'll say, Lunchtime! Yay! Okay, but that's not enough. Do we just say dinner as the next option with an else? Nope. Uh, let's go with the next another option. Else, if we'll say if the i hour of day is exactly equal to 18. Again, we're on the 24-hour clock here for ease of explanation. So that would be six o'clock. Uh, then we will correctly say alert dinner time. Okay, and let's just say that we had not picked a time that's exactly equal to 8 a.m., 12 p.m., or 8, 6 p.m., uh, then we'll just say, you know what, you missed the meal. We'll say else, and then say alert. Sorry, you missed the meal. All right, let's go ahead and give this a try. And hit save, and it says lunchtime. All right, let's change this to another time. How about we make it to 11 a.m.? Sorry, you missed the meal. So it, it stepped all the way through here. This wasn't true, this wasn't true, this wasn't true, so it went to the last one. So this is kind of nice that we can specify um, different matches as many as we want, and then if we don't have things that we like um, that are found, then we'll just go with some default and put that there. Um, how about we change this? So I'll, I'll, I'll give you a chance to just real quickly try, try this on your own as a challenge. What if instead of manually having this hard-coded, what if you allow the user to type in what time of day it is? Do you know what you use to get to get that from the user? You can use a prompt statement. So try to figure that out for a second, and then I'll, I'll show you how you might recode this so that it is dynamic every single time you run the program. Okay, let's go ahead and, and give this a shot. Here we go. I'm gonna say I hour day equals prompt what time is it question mark yay all right let's see what happens what time is it so we put in eight breakfast time let's try it again what time is it six you missed the meal okay that wasn't a real time uh, let's try 18 which is supposed to be 6 p.m. Yay, it's dinner time. Okay, 
So everything's working and the problem is more dynamic now and this is pretty cool. Um, all right, how about we change this up a little bit. Let's say that in addition to the time that we also uh, put in uh, the day of the week. And if it's a certain day of the week, then we want to do something special. So how about this? We do let s day of week equal Tuesday. And what is it that we eat on Tuesday? Well, if you're in certain places of the world, you know that uh, Tuesday is Taco Tuesday. So how about for dinner, we're gonna have another little explanation here. I'm gonna embed some additional logic. So I'll say, so I'm gonna have a nested if statement. So in addition to the previous if statement, I'm gonna throw in another one. I'll say if, and I'll say day of week is exactly equal to Tuesday. Then I'll put in another thing here and I'll say alert. It's Taco Tuesday. Awesome. All right, so let's make sure we hit this. Uh, it's going to be at 18, uh, so 6 p.m. And we already set this to Tuesday, so both of those will execute. Excellent. Here we go. So we'll say what time is it? 18. And dinner time. And it's Taco Tuesday. Yay! Okay. So you can do that and you can do lots of nesting and things like that. The only downside is it can get a little ugly and hard to follow. So you wanna make sure that you're careful with that. All right, uh, that's it for today. So, well, actually, you know what? Let us do one more little thing and let's do the uh, switch statement. Um, we have all these if statements here and there's another way that we could do a list of related options that doesn't involve else if, else if, else if over and over again. So let's uh, introduce instead of if, let's go and do the switch statement. So I'll do let s day of week equal prompt. What day of week is it? All right, so this is how we set up the syntax for this. We say switch as day of week. And then we lay this out with little case statements. We'll say case, and if that variable right here evaluates to Monday, we can match that here. And, oops, I made a little mistake. Case Monday, and then I'll put, <laughs> stop. Okay, there we go. I'll say alert, and let's just say that we're gonna eat an apple fritter on that day, so apple fritter. Good enough. And then let's put in, um, well, let's go ahead and copy this whole block. It's looking a little strange. But let's do Tuesday. And on Tuesday, we'll say we're going to have a bear claw. And we won't do this forever. We'll just do a few more of these. We'll say on Wednesday, we'll have a maple bar and then the correct syntax with these things is to have a default so remember before we had like if else if else if else if etc in this case we just do case 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 for as many things as we want and then instead of else at the end we do this thing default and so maybe our our default choice is going to be alert Old fashioned. All right, good enough. All right, now I, I purposely put a mistake in here and we're gonna watch what happens. So what day of the week is it? 
And first I'll just say Saturday. And it came up with old fashioned. That didn't match anything in there. So we're okay with that idea. All right, let's try this again. How about we go with Wednesday? So I type in Wednesday and it says maple bar. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's what I was expecting. All right. Any surprises for me? And old fashioned. Hey, wait a minute. That's not right. All right, what if I go up to the top and what if I try to do apple fritter? So I'll say Monday. So it says apple fritter, bear claw, maple bar, old fashioned. You know, if this was a vending machine, we'd be pretty excited right now that we just got everything in the vending machine. But if we're programming, then clearly there's a problem. And, and what's happening is whenever one of these is triggered, every single thing underneath it is also being triggered as well. So if we dropped in on Tuesday, then every if we had typed in Tuesday, everything after Tuesday gets executed. If we drive, type in Monday, once this starts executing, everything else gets executing, gets executed as well. So we actually have to put in a break statement, this another special command at the end of each matching condition. When we do this, then everything is going to work exactly like we had hoped. So let's go ahead and give this a shot. Okay. What day is it? Monday. Apple fritter. Nothing else executes. Okay. So we have success successfully learned how to use if else as well as switch statements today. I hope that you've learned everything that you wanted to about if else statements and you're ready to move on to the next lesson. Have a good day.